Hey Gateway, uh, here we are again. I know you are expecting to see uh, Peggy Besh, one of our uh, counselors uh, today. She had to reschedule, I'm gonna talk about that in, in one second, but I wanted to uh, go over a few things technologically speaking that are really neat that we've been able to create, not only for our daily thoughts, but also for our sermons. We have access to Right Now Media, and you've heard us say that so much. Um, in one of my other videos, I told y'all Right Now Media let us know that there's been a 500% uptick in their usage in these last three or four weeks because people are having to stream so much. Right Now Media is a Netflix for Christian curriculum. There are videos, training, conferences. All of it is right there. You can access it directly on your computer or you can access it on the app in your phone, but you have to set up an account for that. And the way that you do that is very easy. You text me or email me and I will send you a link and you click on that link, you make up your username, you make up your password, and then you have access to all of that. And there are, you can watch it on your phone, you can watch it on your TV, there uh, on your computer. There are so many different ways to do that. There are really some amazing studies. But one of the neat things that they do is, is they let you compile your own uh, media in a place that you can get it all. So on Right Now Media, on your Right Now Media, if you have it, if you look at your menu, okay, if you look at your menu, there is a place that says Gateway Church of Christ. Now, in a second, I'm going to show you all of this while I'm talking about exactly what you're doing. I'm going to show it to you on a computer, and I'm going to show it to you on a cell phone so you can see what I'm talking about when I say the menu. So you just go to Right Now Media. Uh, again, that or you pull it up uh, as an app. And there's a menu on the left-hand side. If you're on your app, it's up at the top left. You click on that, and you'll see it says Gateway Church of Christ. When you click on that, it's going to open up a page that has some recommendations, but it also has all of these daily thoughts all in one place. And it also has a place for our 2020 streaming worships all in one place. Uh, now, it's still going to link you to YouTube. It's going to take you directly to YouTube to watch those videos. But if something happens and you misplace the email or you misplaced, you know, you got on the internet and you couldn't find it, you now know, hey, I can go to Right Now Media, I can go to Gateway Church of Christ, I can click on this, and boom, there it is all over again. And as soon as we upload the, the daily thoughts, as soon as we upload, hopefully, you know, in a couple weeks, we're going to be starting some Bible classes with this format. Uh, you're going to be able to have access to all of that. So uh, again, if you want access to this and you do not have it as a member of Gateway, Text me, email me so I can send you the link so you can set that up. Uh, Peggy reached out to me this morning and the reason she's rescheduling to Monday. We have two counselors that, we're, that we have, uh, Peggy Besh and Benny Hunton, um, who work with, with our people here at Gateway. Uh, it's an amazing uh, ministry, to, to, to be perfectly honest. I talk to several churches when it comes to counseling to have what we have to have professional counselors that you can reach out to at, at any time, not just during you know this time, but at any time is such a blessing uh, here at our church. And so you're going to hear from uh, Peggy on Monday. She rescheduled. I am gonna read something that she sent me to, to tell you guys. And you're gonna be hearing from Benny hopefully tomorrow or the day after. He's going to be uh, talking a little bit about anxiety and stress. So uh, what a great blessing that is. But Peggy Peggy reached out to me this morning. The reason she had to reschedule is because she has so many different clients that she's meeting with uh, via phone call and Zoom and, and FaceTiming and, and uh, she's very, very busy. So she wanted me to, to give out her phone number. And so I'm going to do that. It's 850-912-8429. That's Peggy Besh, 850-912-8429. Uh, and, and it's so sweet of her to offer that out. And, and she gave me something that she wants me to read uh, for everyone that's watching. Without hope in God, there isn't much you can do. But with hope in God, there isn't much you can't do. Hope is a belief that something good is about to happen at any moment. When we live in the garden of hope, something is always blooming. Hope is only as strong as its source that's why the foundation of our hope must be God 
and the promise found in his word. So turn your anxiety over to God. God wants us to have and enjoy life. He wants the best for us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and physically every year, every day, and every moment. And when you know that God wants the best for you, you can't help but be filled with hope. We never give up hope. Thank you, Peggy, for sharing those words, and we look forward to hearing from you uh, in person on Monday, just as we're looking forward to hear uh, from, from... I want to share a quick word with you here. Uh, it's not going to be very long, but I've, I've read this book um, by Barbara Brown Taylor, and it's called uh, Learning to Walk in the Dark. Barbara Brown Taylor, is uh, she was uh, a priest for, for a period of time and then a, and a minister, uh, and then she taught at a college and she's retired now. She's been writing for, for many, 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 many years. And uh, she's someone who I've always really enjoyed reading. So uh, she has a lot of, of great books. And I actually just read this one a few days ago. And I had it on my list and I had it ordered and in, in, in my office before any of this happened, any of this time of disruption happened because uh, I, I had no idea. And yet there's so much that she has here that speaks directly to it. Um, so not only is this kind of a recommendation of something if you want to read, but, but what she talks about is she talks about those times of darkness and how we've taken that word darkness. And of course it is all in scripture as something that is kind of void of light, which would be void of God. But she, she lays out that so much of our growth, so much of our transformation, so much of, of who we are as a person, as a follower of Christ is actually formed in the darkness, in the dark times, in uh, challenging times, in, in conflict, in uh, times of futility, uh, in times like we're in right now where everything is absolutely disrupted. We are not on our normal path right now. Our normal path is we wake up and we go to work. Uh, we, we interact with people. We have our time of encouraging corporate worship on Sunday morning. For many of us, not being able to get together on a Sunday morning is kind of the ultimate disruption to everything that's normal in our lives. I mean, I know uh, when I lived in Tennessee and it snowed, we might cancel a Sunday. I think at the most we ever canceled was two in a row. Um, but here, there really isn't an end in sight. So it's kind of unforeseeable. And that unknowingness is, is darkness. It's it's scary. It's like I was saying on, on Sunday, this past Sunday, is eventually our adrenaline's going to wear off. Eventually, the excitement of doing something a little new is going to wear off. Eventually, the cracks are going to begin to show. You know, we're going to start getting stretched and be, become stretched thinner and thinner. And with the, um, the report yesterday that, that we are getting ready to go on uh, the kind of a lockdown to where only essential businesses uh, that the, the governor has put forth, you know, I, I think it's only going to become more challenging. Uh, so we have to say, okay, well, well, how do we keep our eyes focused on God? And, and, and in this book, there's so much that she offers, but she talks about uh, something that's actually probably going to be familiar to you. Um, and it was familiar to me, but then I realized I was using it all wrong. But uh, St. John of the Cross, he was a, um, he was a, a friar, um, from, from Spain. Uh, he wrote uh, his, his little book. It's called The Dark Night of the Soul. And I have used that expression a ton of times. You guys have probably used that. And I've, all, I've always used the expression to say, here was a time where I was separated from God. Uh, here is a time when I did not feel the presence of God. This is the dark night of the soul because the soul is supposed to be around light and, and God. This is the dark night of the soul. Well, you know, you would think that I would be using that confidently because I had read the dark night of the soul. No, I had just done what many people do, gleaned that expression, assumed a meeting onto it, and then I used it. Um, well, then Barbara Brown Taylor and her learning to walk in the dark, she has a whole chapter where she talks about St. John and the dark night of the soul. And you can color, color me very, very, very surprised, um, very surprised that it's not what it meant. It does not mean the separation from God. He wrote the dark night of the soul, uh, St. John of the Cross, when he spent 11 months in monastery prison basically a tiny, solitary confinement room for 11 months. And he wrote The Dark Night of the Soul. But what The Dark Night of the Soul is, it was not him being separated from God. 
It was a moment when all that was normal, all that was regular was taken away and all he had was God. He did not have his own preconceived notions of what God was. He did not have a Sunday morning worship. He didn't have his, his normal rectory. He didn't have the candles to light. He didn't have the things to go through his steps of worshiping God. He didn't have the Bible in front of him. He didn't have, you know, books or theologians in front of him. He didn't have friends to talk to and people to be in community with. He was completely and absolutely stripped of all of that. And his dark night of the soul was realizing that God is always there, even in the nothingness, even in the darkness. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that something that is just absolutely astounding? Because what happens, now go with me here, is as we run the very fine risk of turning even what we think God is into an idol. And here's what I mean. God must be in our Sunday morning worship. And therefore, if I don't have my Sunday morning worship, I absolutely cannot worship God. Is that an idol? I mean, it can be. Because see, God is present in all things. And so we say, well, I don't have access to my Bible, so I can't access God. Or, you know, I have to be with this friend or this speaker. I mean, think about it. I have to listen to this kind of praise music or this kind of singing or else I cannot uh, come in contact with God. And so, so what the, the dark night of the soul does is it says, hey, let's strip away all the things we think we have to have to make sure we're connecting with God and say, can God exist when all is taken away and I'm in a dark room simply in his presence. And so what happens with uh, St. John of the Cross is he begins to say, you know, we put God in the boxes of our lives. We put God in the box of our lives and we need to meet him and the way we work and the way we interact with people and the way we worship and the way we do all of these things. But when all those things are taken away, is God still there? And his answer is yes, absolutely. God is still there. And, and what is Amazing to me, and this is what Barbara Brown Taylor says. She goes, I do not believe that I'm describing a loss of faith in God here, this being in the darkness like this. Instead, I believe I am describing a loss of faith in the system that promised to help me grasp God, not only by setting my feet on the right track, but also by giving me the right language and the concepts and the tools to hook into the real thing when I found it. Are you hearing that? The dark night of the soul is about getting rid of all of the things we think we have to have this checklist to be in contact with God and saying, no, God is gonna be there even in the nothingness. God is going to be there. Uh, and there's also uh, a freedom there. It gets rid of what, what he calls the substitutions that we think are God. So he says, John's answer is not simple. But in the simplest possible terms, he says that the dark night is God's gift to you because it's intended for your liberation. It's about freeing you from your ideas about God, your fears about God, your attachment to all of the benefits that you have been promised for believing in God your devotion to the spiritual practices that are supposed to make you feel closer to God, your dedication to doing and believing all of the right things about God, your positive and negative evaluations of yourself as a believer in God, your tactics for manipulating God and your sure cures for doubting God. All of these can be substitutes for God that get in his way. And that's why sometimes the dark night of the soul is liberating. It's liberating because we experience God in a completely different and beautiful way that we never even expected could happen because it's so far out of our comfort zone that we never would have planned it ourselves. Think about that. And so the question right now for us in this dark night of the soul that we're all in where we're not being able to get together in corporate worship is corporate worship your God or is God your God? Because if God is your God, then absolutely he's going to bless our time of corporate worship. But just because it's not happening right now because we're, we're trying to use wisdom during a tumultuous time, does that mean it does not mean that God is absent? In fact, this may be the moment we need to open up our heart even more to God who exists in these beautiful and yet dark moments. You guys, I think I've, I've told you this. 
streaming services are happening everywhere. And now that they're becoming, you know, they've been a little bit more regular, we're already finding ways to complain about it. We're already finding all the things that are wrong with it. There's already blogs about how it's going to mess everything up. There are already all of these streams of thought that we should do this more, we shouldn't do this, or we should do this. And we are still coming to something that is happening in a temporary freak out moment with the idea that if this does not happen the way that I think that it should happen and I, I get uh, distracted or I'm not getting anything out of it, it must be something wrong with you, not my relationship with what I think God is. That's a hard and deep teaching. But then you think about St. John of the Cross, 11 months in a tiny room, the dark night of the soul, this profound realization that God is still God even when all of the things that give us comfort in this life are stripped away. God is still God when all of the things that give us normalcy in life are stripped away. And not only is God still God in those moments, but what does God have to teach you in this moment? What have you substituted for him that you thought was a holy part of him, but has become so essential to you just simply being a kingdom person that you find you can't even do it without having these things? That's what the dark night of the soul reveals is we need to be able to trust God down any path, especially the paths that are outside of our control. And that's a path that we're on right now. We have no idea what tomorrow is going to bring. This is without a doubt the most tumultuous situation that I think that I have been in, especially when it comes to aspects of corporate worship and gathering and things like that. And yet in this dark night of the soul, this is not a time where God is absent. This is a time where God wants to teach us something. God wants to say, hey, even if you're down in the darkest place you could possibly imagine, stripped of all the things that give you comfort and normalcy. I am still there. I am still God. Be blessed, Gateway, and uh, excited to see you guys soon.